So I'm speaking to Simona Halep, the two-time year-end WTA number one player in 2017-2018. Number one in the world for 64 weeks, winner of two Grand Slams, the French Open in 2018, Wimbledon in 2019, the first Romanian to ever be ranked number one in the world and to win Wimbledon. Welcome, Simona. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Simona, um, I, I feel like I followed your career more than I followed many other careers for a couple reasons. First of all, I can relate to your game. I can relate to your style and I love watching you play. But second of all, I feel like you, your journey has been so gripping and so dramatic and in a good way. But I, I, I just feel like I've felt your heartache when you've lost, but I've also felt your joy when you've won. And I think, I think a lot of your fans probably feel the same way. And you know, you wear your heart on your sleeve and, and we, you know, we really appreciate that. So without further ado, let's just dive into your, the beginning of your career. How did you start playing tennis? Well, uh, yeah. First of all, I'm very honored that you said that my game is related a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it was never easy, uh, my career, because I had uh, to struggle a lot during the years, but uh, it was beautiful, as you said. I could feel the joy more after a very uh, dramatic moment in my career, because I had few. Uh, I started tennis because of my brother. First of all, uh, he was uh, playing tennis in Constanza with my cousins and sometimes I uh, went to pick him up with my, uh, my parents and uh, suddenly I just took a racket and uh, I just entered the court. So it was a kind of first love and uh, I just entered the court and I didn't go out anymore. I just fall in love with, uh, with tennis from the, for the first, very first time. Did you feel like it came easy to you in the beginning? Yeah, it came easy. Uh, I also was doing some sport uh, outside with uh, my neighbors and also with my brother, of course. He's six years yeah, uh, older than me and he always got me out with him. Uh, right. And yeah, I was doing some football, uh, some other sports on the street and it was easy to get the coordination in tennis. Well, you had a very successful junior career. You won the French, the Junior French Open in 2008. And then, I think at 16, you moved away from your home to Bucharest to train. Was that difficult to move away from your home? Yeah, at 16, I won uh, 16 and something. Uh, I won uh, the French Open and I became number one in the world in juniors. And I have decided that uh, I have to move on to go uh, a little bit uh, higher at the next level because I didn't want to play juniors anymore. And to do that, I had to move to Bucharest from Constanza because I had uh, more opportunities here. Also many players against who I could practice better, uh, other coaches and uh, the staff was a little bit bigger and I had uh, a bigger chance to get to professional tennis here in Bucharest. And uh, yes, I moved by myself, no family. Uh, I stayed in a sport hotel with many other sport, uh, athletes, but I was not very open to people at that time. I was very shy, so I couldn't make many friends. But I had the friends from tennis, and the coaches were very nice to me at the beginning here in uh, in Bucharest when I when I arrived. So it was not that easy. But I had some tough moments during the you know the evenings when I was alone. Uh, but I think helped me to to be stronger and to. Uh, to be able to handle the tough moments. That's why maybe in the future helped me to be strong in the tough moments. Right. Well, and your transition from junior tennis to professional tennis, was that pretty comfortable for you? 
was not it was not uh, very easy and not very comfortable because uh, i used to play one set very well and then the second set was much easier to win because all the juniors like kind of give up gave up during the matches right. and then the big impact was uh, when uh, the seniors uh, never nobody gives up so they fight for every ball and with years i uh, i have learned that i have to do the same so it was uh, a big impact to to go from uh, junior level to senior level 2013 was a big year for you that was your breakthrough year you won six wta titles at that point did you start to feel like you belonged at the top well uh, that year was definitely very very strong and uh, very special uh, in april i had uh, some back problems again after in, yeah. in 2008 i have i had uh, the first uh, problems at my back low back uh, then i did the surgery and then in 2013 uh, i had another uh, big struggle with the back so uh, playing qualis in rome and qualifying and also doing the semis beating uh, radvanska in the second round i felt like whoa the big door is opening because i never thought i can beat radvanska at that stage because she was so smart on court and uh, also she was playing with your power and mm -hmm. was completely tough to to make some points against her so right. it was uh, it was a big plus for me at that moment and uh, losing in the semis with Serena winning three games at that time uh, gave me gave me confidence that uh, I can go to the next level I never thought I would be top 5 or top Free, let's say, right. um, yeah. But uh, I had, a, you know, I had the desire to to go more and more and to believe more. You touched upon your back surgery. Obviously, that was your reduction of your breasts. Yeah. And you know, I think after that, you just felt more free and you felt lighter. And I think it's great that you get that out there and you've talked about that because it does um, affect other women. And I applaud you for that. Before you won your two Grand Slam titles, you lost three finals in Grand Slams, and in three sets, by the way. And um, I think the way that you responded and the way that you bounced back from those three losses was very admirable, but it had to be tough for you. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. About the surgery, I want to say that uh, I didn't talk for about seven or eight years. I was too shy to talk about it and I wanted to keep it personal. It was something huge personal, so I wanted to keep it for me. But now I have one, two years then uh, that I like to share because it helped me a lot. And uh, yeah, definitely I encourage all the girls that have this problem because for me it was a problem for tennis. Actually, I did it the back was struggling at that point. So uh, without that operation, I couldn't have been uh, in the top of tennis. That's for sure. So that's why I said that. Okay. And uh, about the three finals that I lost, yeah, I have uh, some, uh, let's say tough memories, but also they helped me to, to win the two titles that I have now. Uh, the only one was um, a depressive one in 2017 and I still have nightmares <laughs> about that match. Uh, but I have learned that if you don't give up, uh, you can uh, become stronger. And Darren helped me at that point to come back stronger and to not giving up uh, even one day of practice. So after I lost that match, I had about two, three days break. And then I, I went back to the court. And uh, even if I was very weak mentally at that point, I uh, fought uh, towards the tournaments, towards the practices, and made me a little bit like, um, okay, it happened, but I'm sure that uh, there is another chance for me and there will be another chance for me. This, is, uh, this was all the time in my mind, and that helped me to go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, I can relate to that because I, I would feel depression, you know, after I lost a Grand Slam. And I, and I think, and I saw your, your quote as saying, I gave up everything for tennis. And at that point, when you lose, I, I feel like for a player like you or me, because I felt the same way, I gave up, I sacrificed, um, your happiness is largely based on if you win or if you lose. It was, it was like that, uh, but I never regretted that uh, 
I started to play tennis. I started to give up everything for tennis because even if I lost those matches, I had many other uh, moments when I was right. when I felt the joy and I felt that uh, you know I am made for tennis. I'm made right. for this life. I'm going to touch upon one of your Grand Slam losses before we get to your wins because I commentated the Australian Open in 2018. And I want to reiterate, remind people what a warrior you were and are. Um, first round, twisted your ankle. Third round, you're back on the court playing Lauren Davis. And again, I think it was the longest match in, in the Australian Open. Three hours, 45, yeah. three hours, 45 minutes. And you were down 40 love, down three match points. Six, five, that, yeah. Six, five, yeah. pulled that out. You won at 15-13. Okay, so that was Lauren Davis. You got, you squeaked past her. Semifinals, Angie Kerber, again, three set match, both of you having match points, very dramatic. And then the finals, finally you, you lost to Caroline Wozniacki in three sets. Um, you looked, I, you looked battered. You looked battered after, during that match and really after that tournament and I guess what I'd like you to talk about are the challenges that that Australian Open presented to you, both physically and mentally. Yeah, I think uh, mentally was uh, the biggest challenge that tournament. Uh, even if physically I struggled during uh, during the tournament, also with the ankle that you mentioned, and also yeah. uh, very tired being in the third round with Lauren Davis. It was like. <laughs> hilarious match yeah I, I have to admit it was maybe one of the longest in my life and also the most dramatical because uh, she had three match points and uh, I had no idea what is going on so when I rewatched the match I realized that I was very close to lose the match so at that moment I didn't really realize what is happening uh, but also, the semi-final was very, very tough. With Kerber, it's always tough to play. I always say that, and I think she knows. Uh, we play three hours, no matter the score. Even if we play two hours, we play uh, two sets. We play three hours. So every every match was uh, mentally like uh, struggling. And uh, I have learned uh, match by match that if I stay strong mentally, I have a better chance to win. Was not my best tennis so far in, uh, in that tournament. Uh, but mentally, I was maybe the strongest in the whole years that, uh, that I had before. And the final, uh, I was not very disappointed after I lost. Even if I was sad because I couldn't touch that biggest, the bigger trophy. Uh, but I was not uh, sad. Uh, I gave everything I had. It was uh, actually too much already after the semi-final. And I thought, I told her, and I, I don't think I have energy left for the final. And playing with Wozniacki, come on, give me a break. Because she does, never misses. And uh, she's very strong mentally as well. She's running very well. So it was a big challenge mentally to go on court and to play a final of a Grand Slam in front of everybody, in front of my family, my team. I didn't want to disappoint them. So I had a lot of pressure in that match. But I went there and I said, OK, it's the last match and I have just to give everything I have left. Um, I was very close for free and serve in the yeah. third set. Yeah. That break uh, cut me down a little bit because I had too much to think about what's going on. <laughs> and uh, I went a little bit down with mentally and I thought at that point that my energy is not very high. So I have to be safe every point. So that's why maybe I was not um, uh, not smart, not, uh, I didn't have courage that much in the last games to take the initiative a little bit more. So I, I was waiting uh, her to miss, probably. I was yeah. not aggressive, so she doesn't do that. She, she does the best in her game to, to wait and to play smart. So I didn't, uh, I didn't win and I couldn't actually finish it in my, uh, my way. But after that, uh, I struggled a lot physically. Mentally, no. So mentally, I was fine. But physically, I struggled. Uh, I was very uh, dehydrated and I was scared a little bit, uh, two, three days after the match. Uh, but then I said, OK, if I was so close again, maybe the next one is mine. So I was very positive after that match. And um, yeah, next week I was 
right uh, back in the court on the court and uh, ready to fight for the next one and i i had a feeling that my chance is on clay to be honest to to be able to play final on hard court and with tough opponents like Kerber and Wozniacki, right. I felt right. like uh, on clay I have a better chance. So I was very positive right. about French Open. You know, I, I always, uh, Darren and I talk about your game and I, and I always say, she's got to work so much harder than the taller girls, like the Venuses and, um, you know, the girls that, that take one step to your three steps. You know, you, you yeah. use your legs. Your legs have to be strong, so strong when you're when you're playing. And I don't think people realize that when you play a Wozniacki or you play a Kerber or, or even a Lauren Davis, those rallies are grueling. They're grueling, you know? So, but now I want to talk about the good stuff because um, French Open 2018, your first Grand Slam title. Go ahead, go with that, run with it. The most special one because it was the first one and I was waiting for it so long and I had so many disappointments uh, during the years, losing the two finals there. Um, I always felt that French Open is like my home uh, because of the clay and I used to play on clay a lot uh, when I was junior because in, uh, in Romania we have many clay courts um, available uh, and um, winning juniors made me very comfortable sure. on the court uh, and also confident that uh, probably one day I will be at the highest level. Uh, and also the friends. I had many friends coming, family. Um, the atmosphere, it's what I need there in Paris. It's very, you know, uh, very close to my heart. It's always been. And uh, every match, even if the first round I lost the first set, <laughs> uh, I was like very confident uh, that my game is there. I practiced very well one week before. Um, I got very confident day by day and uh, also the, the mood that Darren actually sent me during that tournament is that I have to go to take it, not to wait for the title. So I have just to go there and uh, to knock at the door at every match. So I did that and I was very, you know, very straight forward to the point. I didn't uh, have, I didn't have like um, other things uh, bothering me in okay. that tournament. I just said I have to focus on this and that's it, nothing else. In the finals, you got to talk about that match with Sloan. Yeah. <laughs> The final, I said that uh, set and two zero. That not again, please. I'm not. You, you were the court. you were going after it for uh, yeah. at a set and down too low. Exactly. And then something yeah. clicked. The pressure, the pressure that I have another chance in the final, yeah. got yeah. me a little bit slow and uh, too much thinking. So in tennis, if you think too much, is not that good. Uh, right. And yeah, the, the the pressure got me a little bit at that point. Uh, but at set and 2-0, I said, no, I have to do something because I don't want to lose again. And um, I went, if I remember very well, uh, in the third game of the second set, I went three times at the net, which I yes. didn't do the whole match. And uh, then I just, I just relaxed myself. And I said, okay, now I have nothing to lose. Everything is gone. Uh, just be aggressive and fight for every ball, which I did. And then she got a little bit tired, yes. I have to admit. Yeah. But she played unbelievable uh, spin. Yes. I mean, never played against her with that spin and helped her so much on that clay court because it was jumping too high. Yeah, so, yeah, she played really well. She did. I mean, she played well. You, you, I felt I commentated the match, so you were like Darren says, you weren't going after it. And, and then all of a sudden, um, at set and two love, you did go to the net three times and just took a chance, was, was courageous, was brave. And I remember thinking, she went to the net three times, she won that game. She played outside the box, played outside the box. And then that just gave you confidence and you can slowly see Sloan, you know, really, you were going up and she was going down and, um, I mean, that just, I, can you express what it felt like standing on top of the, the podium with that trophy finally? Well, yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing that also the national uh, song uh, was singing oh. by all the, yeah, all the people from there. And to have that trophy in my hands was everything I was dreamed for. You know, like many years of working hard, uh, many years of disappo disappointing moments, the finals that I lost, 
uh, everything like was uh, deleted by this trophy. Right. So you know, I just took the joy. Uh, I just took the the love from the crowd because they really showed me that they uh, they are happy for me. Uh, and also the box, my box was unbelievable. I had very special people there. So it was the most special moment in my life. That's for sure. That I mean, that's awesome. And, and you're right. It's all the losses that you've had is worth that one big win. And it's but but you don't know it when you, when you're losing until you win. And then you realize. exactly the next year, 2019, you won Wimbledon. And um, again, you you beat Serena. Williams um, in a tremendous match. You made three unforced errors and you beat Serena Williams on grass under an hour. How did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> tough to explain. <laughs> tough to explain, Whoa. but uh, I will start a little bit earlier because after uh, French Open, actually I talked to Darren uh, before French Open, if I would be able to win a Grand Slam, I will have three months of holiday. And uh, after I won French Open, I didn't want to have that long holiday. And I started to play again uh, tournaments, but I was not recovered, fully recovered after that success. You know, I was too happy. And uh, <laughs> I started to talk about the chill year, the next year. And I said that because uh, I didn't feel any pressure anymore after yeah. the French Open, you know, and I was like, in the sky all the time but i was working i was doing my my practices i was doing the tournaments but still my mentally my mental was not fully recovered after that big success and uh, when i arrived to french open i felt again that i'm back on track and i have to defend the title so the pressure came back and uh, losing that quarterfinal match was uh, really tough for me i was yeah. very upset on myself because i played wrong she played very well, but I played wrong, wrong tactic. And I said, okay, this doesn't have to happen again. I have to focus on what I have to, to do on court and to start again. And here I go in Eastbourne. I played some matches on, uh, on grass and I felt okay. I felt confident. I lost to Kerber, which most of the time is normal. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, and then I started to, to see different uh, Wimbledon. I said, okay, now I'm not just coming for, uh, to, to visit Wimbledon. I have to take match <laughs> by match. Yeah, because in the past, I didn't feel grass that much. I felt right. insecure on the legs. Uh, I felt like uh, if you don't have power, you don't have chance to win. So now I changed a little bit. I said, okay, the slice is going to help me, the serve. With the slice, uh, I said, uh, if I play a little bit flatter, it's going to help me. Uh, if I try to be more aggressive at the net to take the, the, the ball faster, quicker, uh, I have a better chance. So I, I put it together and I yeah. just had one, ma uh, one uh, mission to go for it. So I did that. And uh, when I beat actually Azarenka, helped me a lot, gave me a lot of confidence that if I beat her here, means that I'm ready. I have yeah. uh, I have a good enough game to, to play uh, the big matches in Wimbledon. And then against Svitolina, again, another tough opponent oh. for me. Right. And it was a very good match. Yes. I felt very happy the way I played. And the final, I have to admit that uh, I didn't uh, think much against who I play because if I would have thought about it, maybe I would have been a little bit dominated mentally, because I always been, and I, I admit all the time because I admire her a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always tough to face Serena, That's, that we have all to admit. Uh, and I said, okay, doesn't matter against who I play, I have just to go and to do my job. And emotions, no emotions, uh, stress, no stress, I didn't really realize what is going on so I just went for it and uh, I knew that the first games are very important with Serena yeah. and also the second important moment is when she starts to motivate herself and starts to to scream a little bit and to say come on I have to be strong there <laughs> so I yes. was fighting a little bit with these thoughts and after I passed them I said now I'm safe I can play so it was it was all together very very well for me in that day yeah I, I 
I, to this day, have never seen a match being played like that. You know, for somebody who doesn't serve in volley and, you know, for, for, for an, from an aggressive baseliner, you did, you were in the zone. I mean, you were in the zone. You were yeah. focused, you were in the zone. You had no weaknesses whatsoever. And after that, um, I remember interviewing you in the press conference and I asked you, um, Simona, was that the best match you ever played? And do you remember what you said to me? Oh, I think I said yes, and I don't believe I will touch it again. <laughs> you, no, said, <laughs> you said not only that, Chrissy, but it's the best match I'll ever play. <laughs> Which, you know, it will be. I mean, I don't know how you could top that. I don't know how you can top yeah. that. I mean, that was, um, and then, you know, we've mentioned Darren in and out of this, and, and now the time has come. 2016, you hired him and you've been with him, for the exception of maybe a few months here and there, but you've been with him ever since then. What, is he, what has he meant to you? Well, uh, he means a lot uh, as a person first, because uh, he's very kind and uh, he knew how to get me as personality because I am very sensitive in moments, in some moments. And also the desire can be very, very big of winning and I can uh, collapse sometimes. So he knew how to manage these emotions and he knew how to accept myself that sometimes I can make terrible match because of the emotions, not the game. Because I, it didn't happen that I give up uh, because I don't have the mood to play tennis. No, never in my life. But because of the emotions, I could uh, give up the match and I could not fight anymore. So he got me in that direction very well. And also um, he teached me how to play tennis, uh, how to tactic more and um, you know, how to react in some moments, how to react uh, when you win big tournaments, how to react when you lose big matches. So he was, um, he was the part that I needed to complete in myself to, to become a big champion as for the big tournaments. Right. So yeah, the, um, uh, the chemistry yeah, with him was really good on court and also off court as a person because uh, as I said, he, he got all the negatives that I had, he turned them to positive. And also he convinced me that uh, I need the help with the psychologist because I was not, uh, I didn't agree at the beginning and I didn't want to, to accept that actually I need someone to put me in the right place with my thoughts on the court. Uh, and uh, once I accepted that, it was much easier for him also to work with me. Not much, not very much easier because we had two moments that meant a lot also in 2017 in Miami when he just yeah. left. Uh, and uh, at that point, yeah, yeah, he just left. <laughs> and that point was uh, very important to understand that uh, if I want to become uh, like a top player, number one, number two, I have to stop struggling with the emotions and also with the attitude on court. So this was, yeah. I think, the biggest thing that he turning brought. Turning point. And, uh, you, you've had a couple yeah. turning points, you know, and that was a real turning point. And, uh, you know, it, it, this leads me to the next um, when I think about Romanian former tennis players, and I think about Virginia Rizic, who is your manager and who's been, you guys yes. have been very loyal to each other. And I think of Jan Tiriak and I think of Ilya Nastasi. I think, then I think of you yeah. in the beginning, you know, cause now you, you really have settled down a lot better, but it's, you know, Romanians are fiery. Romanians are fiery people. And you are a proud Romanian. You've had a choice to live anywhere in the world, but you go back home because your your roots are firmly planted in Romania. Yeah. And I guess, what do you love about that country, your country? I can live only with friends and family. I cannot live somewhere else kind of alone. Uh, so I prefer to come all the time here and also the energy of this country. It's a beautiful country, even if we struggle a little bit, maybe economy and stuff, but we have beautiful places and uh, I love just going out, feel the, the energy of the cities, the people. We are kind of fairy, how, how you said, but also negative. So uh, right. now uh, turning this into a positive in my life, all the thoughts that I had negative before, now I'm just uh, trying to help the kids a little bit 
to stop being negative because life is too beautiful and if we know how to live it we can enjoy it at maximum so i'm trying yeah. just to to see these kids that are going to tennis now because of my results most of them uh, and to inspire them to be positive is the most important thing i think in life i i found out I discovered this part and helped me a lot to become what I am today. And I'm a happy person. So yeah. I want to send the, this to the kids. So that's why I feel good here. I feel part of this country and I cannot leave. What are your future goals for tennis? Do you have any one goal or two goals left? Uh, my goal is to play another three, four years. Before okay. the pandemic, I said one more year, <laughs> but now I extended my career because I stayed too much home and I can, uh, I could feel how the normal life is. So it's pretty boring. So I have a little bit more adrenaline. I need a little bit more adrenaline. So I'm going to play a few more years. And um, the goal is just to touch the best, best of myself, best version of myself. Uh, of course, Grand Slam, it's always there and I'm going to fight for them, but no pressure. So I just want to take it easy and to give every week uh, everything I have. So, so finally, Simona, your foundation. I really want to get a little bit of feedback from you. That's, I know that's very close to your heart because it is working with kids. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, uh, I started uh, a few years ago and uh, the for the main project was to help the kids to get to tennis, to get closer to the tennis. Um, we didn't have like uh, big chances lately with uh, big projects about the tennis, but I'm thinking also to start an academy and I can help uh, with the foundation more. Uh, but also I helped uh, other sports. I, um, I uh, helped also gymnastics, ice hockey for girls. I had a nice. team. Yeah, I had a team and they were traveling uh, all around the world in Europe and they won a few tournaments. So it was fun. I made it uh, more for fun and to help the kids. Uh, but now it's not very, very big. So I want to, after I, I will finish with tennis, for sure I will have more time to do more projects. Sure. But uh, at the beginning, it's also tough. I have to get the feeling of it. So I have to get involved more to yeah. see what I feel, what I need actually to help the, the kids. And for sure, the main, uh, main, main part will be the tennis, but also other sports. So I don't stay only on tennis. This is um, the Chris Everett, WTA world yeah. number one. And I guess my last question is going to be, um, and you've won it twice, by the way. What does this mean to you to be year-end number one? Well, I think uh, this, this thing is uh, more than a tournament uh, win because uh, you have to play the whole year very well and you have to be very constant. You have to be well, like very strong to the pressure that uh, you have sometimes to defend some points. You have to, to be like full all the time. And to be number one in the world is uh, very special because not many people get there. I think I was uh, 25th one and also the 13th, which is my lucky number, year-end player. So uh, it's pretty amazing to be able to do that and uh, for sure will be like very well put here in my heart. It's, Good. it's close to Grand Slam, maybe more Good. sometimes. Good. Well, Simona, thank you so much for the time. I have watched your career for a long time and, I, and I've seen the empowerment over the years that you've shown us in, in, by being a woman and you've spoken out, you've been honest, and you've been vulnerable to all of us. And you're a great ambassador for the sport of tennis. So well-deserved. Thank you for speaking to us and stay well, okay? Thank you very much also for inspiring us because you guys, uh, the former players, inspired us a lot. So um, thank you for that. And it was an honor to speak to you also. Awesome. Thank you.